This is What's Going On. I'm Jamie Young and my associate. Diana Patton. Hey, Diane. Um, very much an interesting week, you can say. Yes. You know, um, who would have, well, I would say who would have thunk it, but uh, a lot of us kind of figured this out a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> you know, um, we, I, I have to say, we actually saw an insurrection of our federal government. Yes, sedition. Yes, yes. And um, there are members of Congress that have been acting in very much sadistic manners, you can say. Um, and the crazy thing is that you still have 70 to 80 percent of Republicans believing all this BS. Yes. Yeah. You know, um, we went from the age of information to the age of misinformation. Yes, and it has a lot to do with social media. Though I, I do have to uh, tip my hat off to social media as of this week because they shut down a lot of stuff. And we're finding out how few people actually know what freedom of speech is. Yes, yes. And I, I, over the years, there's two things that I always carried with me. Um, mainly, well, since I got my smartphone, which, since I started using a start, smartphone year, years upon years ago, um, that's the Constitution and oath of enlistment. Mm -hmm. Because I look at it this way. Once you take that off, it's for life. Absolutely. You know, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And I've always found the Constitution to be a very interesting document in itself. Yes, especially that it's a living document. Right. It represents the living, breathing country that we are. It's uh, one of my uh, professors said it's written in pencil, which means it can be changed at any time to meet the now, not the past, the now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's considered to be a living, breathing document. Yes. Um, you have mentioned your little bit of your own family history to me at one point that you're related to General George S. Patton. In in some way, I've been told yes. Yeah, you know, which you know is really nice. Um, not that many people that know me with the exception of Kelly, Jennifer, and a couple others, know that on my mother's side of the family, the Wilsons, that one of my ancestors, a guy by the name of James Wilson, mm -hmm. is one of our founding fathers. Mm -hmm. He is signature is on the Declaration of Independence. He was one of those that helped get the ball rolling for the ratification of the Constitution. And I'm sure he probably debated some of these issues. What a damn liberal. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say a liberal. I would say more in the way of uh, from his bio that I've read on Wikipedia. Um, Kind of an opportunist in a way. <laughs> well, still, that was the liberals back then. They were the ones that started the revolution. And mm -hmm. 
Got everything underway. But at the time, along with his contemporaries, he was writing papers about how the, the crown had no authority over the colonies because they were not represented in the, you know, in England, in England, in their um, parliament. Yes. So, but his only true fame was being one of Washington's first nominees for the Supreme Court. But I could imagine if they were if they were to come a, come if they were to travel through time to right now they would probably go back and just literally start ripping things out of the Constitution and saying let's do it this way because these people have fucked it up. <laughs> You know, it's mind boggling to think that we are going to be witnessing something that hasn't happened in like 150 years. Uh, another cold civil war is starting well, to heat up. Right now, I could say that we're kind of on the precipice. We're already in the Cold Civil War started with the Tea Party and the Republican Party. Yes. The, the, the problem is right now we have extremes on both sides going at it. Right. And as, um, what was it, um, a couple of years back, I think it was uh, summer of 2019, I met with um, John Carmen, who works for Congresswoman Stefanik about these type of issues, um, about this call for a civil war, um, the extremists on within Antifa itself, because not all of Antifa is extremists. No, uh, a lot of people who call themselves Antifa are not radicalized and super far left. Right. But they don't get the people who are believe in violence as the only way to get the point across and using the exact same tactics, speech, and language of those on the extreme right. Yeah, which also comes from those that would rag in the techniques are very similar to those that have been radicalized by the um, you know the word, <laughs> yeah, I'm having a speech problem right now. Thesaurus, thesaurus. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, the exon, yeah, the Muslim <laughs> extremists, mm -hmm. um, like those in Al Qaeda and ISIS and Boko Haram, you know, they are pretty much hardcore Muslim any, extremists. Any extremist in any country, any extremist group have always used the same tactics and they always end up wanting the power and control over everything. It's mm -hmm. this way and that's the only way. Oh yeah, it, it, it's my way or the highway, we can say. Yep. And we have seen really since and people haven't really acknowledged this that you know on a whole that the the extreme was always there within our country on, on both sides always yeah. yeah um so now it is taken a more aggressive form, mainly on the right. But issue being is that yes. the left is going to get to be almost like that, if not exactly like that. Because that's the driving force. One ups, the other's got to up too. They both mm -hmm. got to keep going.
going up and up and up until something breaks. Very similar to the early days of the Cold War before the Cuban Missile Crisis. Yes. Where there was a massive proliferation of nuclear weapons between the U.S. and the then Soviet Union. Well, right here in Buffalo right now, we've got um, the LGBT community is going and rehashing the Madison Society and all, how gay civil rights started and how the Communist Party was actually very heavily involved in that. But what they're not doing is exploring why the Communist Party got kicked out of all these groups because they were actually using these groups to, um, which were funded by Russia and China, and they ended up um, blackmailing LGBT people who were in government, which of course in turn got us uh, gay people kicked out of government and uh, do not, don't ask, don't tell, and all those other things mm -hmm. because of the Communist Party trying to take power. Right. And now we have what you can kind of say more in the way of uh, a neo-fascist movement within our own country that has always, it has always been there. The neo-fascist movement has always been there. It mm. showed it had, its head, I think, and there's a film that was done at the time in 1937 at Madison Square Garden where the American German bunt put on a rally. Oh, the, the Nazi rally at Madison Square Garden, yeah. Right. right before we got involved in World War II. Right. And at the time, it was also Crystal Night in um, Austria, mm -hmm. which Arnold Schwarzenegger, I have to say, I, I love the guy. Even <laughs> though he's a Republican, I love his movies, you know. Well, that's the thing. People don't understand. Like, everyone asks me why I hate Republicans. I tell them, I don't hate Republicans. I hate those who lead the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. Because those are the people that aren't standing up for their own ideals that they themselves believe in. Right. It's one thing to disagree with somebody who's a Republican or even a Democrat for their political ideas or even over certain, you know, and you can say on both sides, the religious beliefs. You can, you know, have that healthy disagreement, but it's, yes. but it's a respect towards the person and a commonality that has to be there. Most people don't realize this. We need both parties right now because that's pretty much our only choices, right. but we need differences of ideas. We need the conservatives to keep us from progressing too fast and making tons of mistakes. And the conservatives need us so we keep progressing and keep moving forward. Right, without falling back into, you can say, the whole. Yes, we, we have to keep progressing. We have to keep changing, but we cannot go backwards. No. Change is hard. Everyone resists change, but change is the only true constant that we have in, in life. Everything mm -hmm. changes. You can't stop change. You can slow it down. You can speed it up, but you can't stop it. Mm -hmm. True, true. But um, we just, you caught it too. Trump is the second president to ever be impeached twice. First president to be impeached twice. And the only. Yes. Yes, this is the fourth impeachment we've ever had, and he's had two of them. Yeah. So, and chances are that, and I do feel that he will be convicted in the Senate. I'm still borderline on that. I'm not sure. But with Mitch McConnell saying that this is an impeachable offense, Quite mm -hmm. possibly, yes. But also you had 10 Republicans vote for the articles of impeachment, which gives those Republican senators cover. Yep, there's never been 10 people of either party switching their, their vote for impeachment, not during the Clinton trials, 
the Democrats, there weren't 10 Democrats. And in the impeachment before that, there weren't, with, um, I think it was Nixon, there was not 10 Republicans then either. No, even though Republican leadership did go to Nixon and say that the votes were there to convict. Yes. But um, the only person to that, and he was a Republican at the time that voted to impeach Trump the first time around was Justin Amash, who ended up becoming an independent. Yes. And I don't, I have to check to see if he's still in Congress because I have a feeling that since that he was primaried. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that this time there's going to be a few more people that are going to be voting for the impeachment on the Republican side. It's going to yeah. be 100% Democrat. No, no, though an interesting little fact, and this was verified on uh, Lawrence O'Donnell and Rachel Maddow, that um, if, say, 20 Republicans don't show up, mm -hmm. they can't, their vote. It counts as an NV, non-vote. Right, which means there would be a conviction with the majority of the Democrats. Yes. So, but seeing that we already had 10 Republican House members vote for impeachment, there is that possibility that we could end up seeing 10, maybe more on the Senate side. Mm -hmm. Provided that also if you decide not to show up. Well, the thing is, a lot of people don't understand, too, is, is this impeachment process, if they don't rush it, which we already know that it's going to be rushed, well, the, um, well, it can go on after he's out of office. Well, as it is, McConnell is not going to have anything brought up until the 19th, the day before the yes. inauguration. Um, and they won't even be able to take a vote on it until the 20th. Right. In the afternoon. Yes. An hour after President Trump is out of office. And Biden is sworn in. Yep. So, as far as it, is it being, as far as time is concerned, they can bring this up in the Senate a hundred days from now, if they want to. Yes. As long as it's transmitted to, as long as the House transmits it to the Senate and the Senate says, okay, we have it. That's all they need to do. Yes. Because McConnell has already said so much. The only person that could probably push it earlier is Chuck Schumer. Right. But both Schumer and McConnell have to be in agreement. I, I'm not too sure about that because uh, if after the inauguration, then we already have Kamala Harris as a, a deciding vote. Right. But you need two thirds of majority in order to convict. Right. Yeah. So. Which we, means shall see. we need the 20 Republicans. Right. But the Republicans are also going some, and it's already been stated by the House Republicans that they need to do investigations. First of all, there, I see some fault in that statement because investigations are already happening. And they, the members of Congress are fact witnesses. Yes. Within that investigation. They were there when it happened. So as far as an investigation is concerned, we have an ongoing investigation that's being aired on all Life. major networks. 
Yeah. It was it was live. <laughs> you can't right. deny this. And the FBI has already made like a hundred and some odd arrests. And they're looking at further charges. The, mm -hmm. the main charge that they're bringing these people in is unlawful entry and trespass. And now they're thinking about adding murder to every one of the charges. Right. Along with uh, theft um, and a host of other charges. Mm -hmm. Though I, as someone, and I'm sure as someone that served in military and for me who grew up in the service and enlisted i still find it very disturbing that there were those that are former military and, and active possibly, and possibly active military involved they've already seen i think three definite active military personnel there. I'm well I'm sure that if I read this correctly, um one of the active military was with the army's psyops mm -hmm. who led a hundred people into the cap to capital. Mm -hmm. And this is somebody that's supposed to be trained in psychological warfare. And also, you got to remember, when you're in the military, you're not supposed to take political sides on anything. No, and another, I don't know if you count this, there was a picture taken of these two women. One was dressed up in a Statue of Liberty costume with the QAnon symbol on it. Yeah, I saw and that. The lady standing next to her was in uniform. Mm -hmm. Didn't see her. I caught that and take another look at that picture. You will see full dress, army. Oh, it's a little hard to tell because there's a lot of people in fatigues there. <laughs> yeah, well, this is service dress. Oh, service dress uniform, not fatigues. No, okay. service dress, ribbons and all. Which really got me. Well, that person screwed according to the UCMJ. Right. And there is calls for those that are former military to be brought back into uniform to face that. The retirees, yes. Mm -hmm. Because they would lose their pension and, and everything else. Right. It would be their honorable discharge would be switched to a dishonorable. Yes. And they would probably serve time in Leavenworth. Right which is worse than any other place. Yes, because you get more time than you would in a civilian jail than you would a military jail. Military jail, you're going at least for 25. Yeah, and the thing is, is that they would be facing both time in jail in, in civilian prison and military. Well, that would be up to the judge in the civilian district, whether it be concurrent or right. consecutive. Right. And I kind of hope that those that were there that are current military and former get the concurrent. Well, get I, the I would want them to, to be out after they're 25 because this way they could actually state the mistakes they made. Now, if they don't learn it, keep them in. Mm, yeah. I'm always for people paying the price for what they did and not paying too much. Mm. You know, let, you know, people who make mistakes, they need to explain it to other people so that other people don't go down the same rabbit hole they did. Though, which, though, if they're tried in both civilian and military, which one would take precedent? UCMJ and the military court. Okay. Always the military court takes precedent over the civilian court. Okay, I figured that. Always. That's why a lot of civilian courts uh, don't like 
military bases in their area because if you get a DWI in the area and the military says, well, you didn't get a DWI and they, they fight over it, the military always wins. And the person usually ends up having to spend the rest of their service time at that base on base without being able to leave. I've seen that happen a half dozen times when I was there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that it happened here at Plattsburgh when the base was active too. Oh yeah. I mean, I had a false arrest in Chicago myself when I was in uniform. <laughs> <laughs> on oh, St. Patrick's Day, good story. <laughs> Remind me to tell you sometime. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that it sounds just as good as uh, a friend of mine that was serving aboard the USS Portland. <laughs> uh, shortly after um, the bombing at Be in Beirut, mm -hmm. Um, he spent some time in Greece, got drunk, got into a fight with Greek military. Oh, that's, that's a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't, he never elaborated on what the total outcome was, but he said he was pretty drunk on it. It was all... <laughs> That's where I ended up with my problems with uh, with my PTSD and got brought back. Greece is a great place. <laughs> no, never been there. Probably go there one of these days as a tourist. <laughs> it's my favorite place I've ever been to. Favorite place. Mm. But, um, oh. The question now being too, seeing that there are these well-trained and heavily armed, I, I can't even call them militias because they do not fall under the actual description. No. They are paramilitary organizations. They're homegrown terrorists. Right. And they wouldn't know how to fight a war if their life depended on it. Though, there are those former military and current military that are part of these, mainly those that are serving in the Guard and Reserve mm -hmm. that are part of these organizations. So they have the training and the tactics. Yeah, but you know as well as I do that you don't know how you're going to react until it's time to react. True. And the, the stress of actually fighting or um, having to fight a fire, uh, flooding on the ship, being in a tornado, typhoon at sea, you name it, whatever have you, the stress that you go under, having bullets shot at you, you have no idea what you're gonna do. And half of these people don't have the actual training that we got where it's, it's ingrained into you day in day out and, and, they only have their ideals and their extremist views and, 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 feel like and, the thing, and the thing too is that um those that are part of these groups that are former military they have been unless they kept themselves in really good shape and condition they could probably stroke out in an instant <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, donuts have not been helping them for their survival food. <laughs> no, but also um, you have those like Timothy McVeigh. He was booted out of the army. An Angola person that's about in a half hour from here. <laughs> His mm -hmm. family's a half hour from here. And... These are the ones that have never seen what it's like to be in combat. A friend of mine, a trans member of the Army, who's currently stationed at uh, Fort Leonard Wood, her and I have texted back and forth a few times in the past. And she talked, she mentioned to me about times that she's been in combat in both Iraq and Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And those, she still has pretty bad dreams 
and she, whenever she sees a package on the side, her anxiety just skyrockets. Oh, it's PTSD. I have it. Mm -hmm. Mine's from a car accident, but I, I still have it. I, I recognize it. Oh, yeah. I still have a little bit of the same from a car accident that I had back in 90, no, back in 89. You know, head on. Mm -hmm. But um, what I found out in the military is I'm one of those people who runs towards danger, not away from it. Mm. I get clear headed. Every my training, it goes straight forward. And then when it's over, I totally collapse <laughs> and need some help. That's mm. that's what I found out. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, to a certain extent. Because there have been incidences which I didn't likewise. You know, there was a car accident, I ran towards it. One to make sure that the per see what the condition of the people were while another person was calling in. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah, after EMTs and the police showed up and the fire, I walked away. And I had to sit down. Yep. Because I was seeing myself in that accident. Yep. Happens to me every every time I go through something super stressful. Mm hmm I usually tell the people, don't forget to call the ambulance for me when this is all over with, because yeah. I will be collapsing. <laughs> uh huh. So. But you know, I'm sure you got the recent reporting that the FBI put out that for all 50 state capitals to be on high alert. Yes. And if I was in good health, I would try to volunteer some way somehow of helping the people guard whatever I could in mm -hmm. any way I could, whether it be online or being there in person. Mm-hmm. Because this is ridiculous. No, no. Um, someone that I know who served here at the base during the Cold War, um, decent guy, you would love him. Um, aircraft mechanic, worked on the KC-135s. Over the summer, I mentioned to him one day that this is worse than a cold war what's going on yeah because it's on our it's it's right here yeah it's in your and, face and all he had to say is yeah because we're doing it to ourselves and it's it's not north versus south it's really neighbor versus neighbor this time mm-hmm mm -hmm. well um But these groups, seeing that they are still communicating, regardless of how many social media sites are set. Oh, just are because shut down. parlors shut down and MeWe and these, uh, there's ways to communicate. Still, so there's there's texting. There's all kinds of ways. I mean, yeah. I, I'm a computer forensics person. That's what I got my degree in. So I know there's the dark web. There's these other sites. But a lot mm -hmm. of these sites are still monitored. That's how the FBI knows that this right. stuff's going on. Right. I always thought it'd be funny to have these, try to get into these conspiracy sites and let them know that parlors run by the FBI and CIA. <laughs> well, and... and when they when Facebook and Twitter first announced the whole thing, and I've been monitoring this stuff off and on, because believe it or not, I'm that twisted. <laughs> Same here. Um, and I, I contributed to the simple fact that I was born in Southern California and I grew up in the Air Force. How twisted can you be? <laughs> um, Damn, <but> hippie. <laughs> I 
Hey, I was born with dog tags. <laughs> and a surfboard. <laughs> uh, no surfboard. I don't swim. Oh, I can't. I can't call you. Can't call no. you a hippie. <laughs> no, I, I. I don't swim. Oh, in fact, man. I can't. I can't swim. I could teach you. <laughs> I'll drown. No, you all Yeah, I will. Not with me around, you all <laughs> I would drown. That's why I never went into the Navy. Something about water and drowning. I prefer the hard ground. Um, plus, the convenience of having 24-7 pizza delivery. <laughs> well, if you're on a carrier, you get that too. <laughs> yeah, but it's not the same. <laughs> they got a McDonald's on an aircraft carrier. Yeah, I know. Would you... <laughs> But you guys had to, I served on at Bowling Air Force Base in uh, uh, Washington, D.C. You could order a T-bone steak at midnight, have it delivered to your barracks. <laughs> hey, Air Force is cool. <laughs> Great food. <laughs> Great food. <laughs> That's why half the, stand, half the uh, personnel tend to be overweight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but um, getting back, um, God, train of thought. <laughs> yeah, you threw me off. Um, Sorry, that's I know. Okay. I know. I'm. I get like that sometimes. Sorry. But they are communicating regardless. Yes. When you have, like I was saying, when you start having Facebook and Twitter and them shutting down Trump, a lot of these folks were saying that this is against the First Amendment. Obviously, they never seen or read the first amendment no or they don't understand it right because it's like they don't I, understand the second amendment the 14th the 25th none et of it etc yeah um no word and i looked at it again just before we started this do you see anywhere where it says congress shall not make any law and Twitter and Facebook and Instagram prohibiting free speech. I don't see anything about private corporations in the First Amendment. No, no. That would fall under the FCC and the um, IRS and, and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Which would mean they wouldn't be able to get involved in what the, is perceived for those company regulations, anyways. Yeah, and anyway, because then they would be stifling free speech of those companies. Right, and so when a company, a social media company like Facebook or Twitter, bans somebody from their platform, they are applying their rules and regulations when it comes to content. Yeah, plain and, and the simple. The agreement that you sign when you become a user or a which, consumer, which would, would actually be. Which nobody reads. Yes. And if you take the social media sites, they're actually publishers. That's right. all they really oh, yeah. are. It's a high tech publisher. Oh, yeah. They get to choose just like book publishers or newspapers mm -hmm. or television does what they wish to publish. Just because right. it's a free form publishing doesn't mean they don't have the right to go back and say, ah, 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 we don't want this. It's down. I mean, I know people on the left who have gotten their stuff taken down. Oh, yeah. And I, silenced I've had, and thrown in Facebook jail. Yeah. I, I, I've never been banned from Facebook, though there has been a couple of groups in which I've posted stuff in which they've taken it down. That's because of the group policy. It has nothing to do with free speech. 
I and, I was talking to one of my friends that uh, leaned very right, and he was talking about all this stuff. And I I said it's basically like your your Facebook page. Let's take your Facebook page and my Facebook page as smaller examples. You get to publish whatever you want on your Facebook page, and if you don't want something on there, you have your choice of deleting it, blocking it, mm -hmm. unfollowing the person, unfriending the person or mm -hmm. blocking the person. You have those five options. Right. Now, what you're trying to tell me that what's going on is I have the right to tell you with my free speech that you can't take my stuff down. You can't block it. You can't ban it. You have to keep it up on your page. Otherwise, you are ruining my First Amendment. Right. Well, all that is is upscaled to the big corporations. Mm-hmm. And they, even though they are a platform for discussions and topics and whatever else, cat videos, funny pictures from Star Trek, um, they are accountable to their shareholders. Their shareholders, their users, mm -hmm. people who consume their services. Right. So if the, the majority of their consumers don't want that content up, then they have, even if they want it up, right. if their consumers don't, they have to change. Otherwise, they go bankrupt. Right. But the most important, besides the consumer, is the stockholder. Right. The ones that sit on the board of these corporations. They're the ones that say, no, we do not want the dumb dumb in the White House doing this shit anymore on our platform. Yep. He's gone. And then they want to bring up, well, why is I Ayatollah Khomeini still on there when he's over in that country. Well, in order for them to sell their stuff in that country, they have to keep them on it. And the point is, too, they are international. Right. If they, they can ban certain individuals on an international level, but the Ayatollah is the leader of Iran. He they sets are, the laws there. <laughs> so guess what? It's like if, say, I don't know, um, they were to ban Vladimir Putin mm. from Facebook. It would be the same thing. Right, except because they that would be now you wouldn't him. be they, able to they, have... would, they would be banning him for no reason. Mm -hmm. If they were to ban the Ayatollah, same thing, no reason. Right, there but... is a reason when it comes to Trump. Well, the thing is, too, is they have to follow the laws in those countries. True. And since those are dictatorship countries, mm -hmm. the dictator sets how those laws are run in that country, which means you can't ban me if you want to sell your services in this country. If you want to have access to our population, our media, you do this. The Chinese have the same thing. I would say the North Koreans, but North Koreans don't know what they're doing. North uh, Koreans have access to some parts of the internet, but their internet service providers, which are American internet service providers, have to code the internet there to block certain content. Right, and the same, any US company that has international ties, no matter what country it is, they have to abide by that country's laws. Right. It's just like a service member who's on leave in another country. You have been, had sh leave from ship many times yep. in different yep. countries. You have to abide by their laws. Because you, you are in their jurisdiction. Once you step back on ship, 
you are no longer in their jurisdiction because naval ships are sovereign U.S. territory. Yes. So when you're on leave in, say, Greece, Italy, UAE, wherever, you are on their territory. You're not on U.S. territory. So there you go. Our female uh, service members who go to, say, Saudi Arabia, where the women have to be totally covered up, mm -hmm. our female soldiers have to be totally covered up. If they don't, they will get the women there attacking them and spray painting their arms and legs and face and everything else. People yeah. don't realize that. I've seen it happen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, there, we have several air bases in that region, um, one in the UAE, one in Carter, and soon to be one back in um, Saudi Arabia. And those are the only ones we know about. <laughs> right. Those service members and their families that are stationed at those bases, once they step off base, they are subject to that country's laws. Yes. And that's something that most people also don't realize. And most of these people have never even set foot out of the U.S., so they have no idea how great they actually have it here. Mm hmm You know, the most anybody has ever been out of this country around here is Canada. Same here in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> takes takes 20 minutes. You're over in Canada. Oh, yeah. 15, 20 minutes and you're in Canada from Plattsburgh. If you're going a little bit faster, you could probably do it in five to 10. <laughs> There's always a line going over the bridge here. It's at least 20 minutes to four hours. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just referring to the time that it takes to get to the border. I'm not referring, because our board, believe me, here in the North Country, the most traffic that you see at the border here is trucks. The box trucks. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Not here. We got everything. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've I've been we have driven through the Buffalo area on our way to and from Missouri. So along with Rochester. So they are busy areas. Buffalo used to be one of the top ten most populated industrialized uh, cities in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Now we're something like 147 or something. We keep going further and further down. <laughs> oh, eventually you'll probably be like Plattsburgh. Well, actually, Williamsville is supposed to be turning into a city and Buffalo is supposed to be turning into a town. Because <laughs> oh, <laughs> everyone's moving out of the city. <laughs> Yeah, a city, a town that looks like a city and a city that looks like a town. Yes. Population-wise. Yeah. But, um... This summer, I want to come out that way again, too. I've been trying to plan to, to come out there and see you guys again ever since I did so three years ago. Yeah. Something always comes up, and I, I'm not able to do it. Now, if you do, you can take a look at the restoration work on the uh, B-47 and the FB-111. I, I want to actually spend some time there more than just spending overnight. I'm getting my, when all this uh, virus stuff happened, I was planning on getting my camper ready to take a trip just either across New York State or through the states to spend a month just traveling. Oh, yeah. I could get someone to drive for me with my back and everything. Yeah, yeah. But um, your thoughts on what we may see in the next few weeks to several months? Worse than Wednesday. Way worse than Wednesday. Yeah. And I have a feeling it's going to 
get even worse after the inauguration. Mm -hmm. The 17th, I'm not sure if anything's going to happen then because they've announced it all over the news that something bad's going to happen, so they're prepared this time. These people rely on unpreparedness. Both extremists do. They always do. They wait yeah. for you at your lax time, and that's when they do what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. The Capitol is being fortified and hardened. Um, how fortified and hardened, that's yet to be seen. Um, the soft targets, for the most part, are the state capitals. But there are other so soft targets that can be considered. Towns, mm -hmm. counties, cities, not just the capitals. They might nope. be trying to get the attention to go to the capitals to attack the smaller areas. Mm -hmm. It'd be easier to organize. That's at least in my military thinking, that's what I would do. Oh, yeah. Put out one as a distraction and do the other. Yes. Or do both. Have some people show up in small numbers at the capitals while you send the main bigger forces to the cities and the towns. Right, and you have you ever been through Albany? Yes. That's right, you have. You know that the way that Albany is, it's a very major metropolitan area. Albany itself is just a small part. Yep. It's just like the Burlington area, where you have Burlington itself, then you have Winooski, Colchester, Williston, they each have their own separate town centers or town halls. Just like here in Hamburg. Right. It would be very easy, and I'm using Vermont as a, a hypothetical. It would be very easy for them to send, say, a dozen or so people down to Montpelier, while the other main part is spread out through the Burlington area and other towns within Vermont. Mm -hmm. An extremist group, if they have enough members or at least enough people that are willing to do that, they can do that. Yes. Within it, New York State. It doesn't even take a, a, a dozen people. It can take two or three. But what I mean is down at the state capitol. Yes. You have a few dozen, but the main bulk is spread out through the state. Yep. That's my worry. Mm -hmm. We already had a very large rally here in Hamburg where I, I don't know if you saw that Robbie De Niro guy on Fox News who was fighting, the gym owner who was fighting Cuomo and all that, that happened here, right here, 10 minutes down the road. <laughs> uh, which Cuomo? Andrew Cuomo. Okay. Yeah, the, the governor. Um, and this gym owner was fighting him and uh, most of the people associated with this gym owner we're at the Capitol. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, they had this big rally over the summer right here at Hamburg Town Hall. They had about a thousand people down there ranting and raving. They hung uh, um, uh, Andrew Cuomo dummy and effigy. There were um, New York State senators there, <laughs> congressmen. New York state wise, not federal. Not national. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, right there, we have a bunch of these people right here and they could easily march in here and, and cause havoc. Yeah. Though under New York state law, you cannot, you have to have a license to conceal carry. Yes. And 
there is no open carry, unlike Vermont, which is an open carry state. And years ago, I, a friend of mine that I worked with who sold guns, nice guy, uh, showed me uh, basic, well, even though I already knew, um, basic handling of a sidearm. Mm -hmm. um, he showed me the gun laws for New York State. Mm -hmm. That thick. Yeah. The gun laws for Vermont, one paragraph. Yeah. So, but you do have those that would, you can say, tempt fate mm -hmm. by trying to do an open carry here in New York. Law enforcement would be all over them. Unless that law enforcement itself is infiltrated by sympathizers, which is something that we all have known this all along. That there is those that are in, in law enforcement and the military that tend to be white nationalists, white supremacists. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that we refer to as the bad apples. Mm -hmm. Well, you saw it on TV when they were letting the people in, mm -hmm. in the Capitol. Mm -hmm. You know, the majority of the Capitol police were doing their job defending the Capitol. You did have those, and I think it's like 10 of them or something like that are under investigation. Yes, possibly more. Right. So, and now there's reporting that some of these new members of Congress allowed, gave tours to some of these insurrectionists the day before. Yes, and that uh, one QAnon uh, Congresswoman that was just in, she was actually texting Nancy Pelosi's whereabouts during the insurrection right and she's the Bowler, one that i think her name is yeah and she's the one that also was stopped from carrying a gun into congress well she had nothing on her she they, she set off the um metal detector and refused to let them look into her purse finally she let them look there was nothing there that was recently. I'm talking about when she first. Oh, when she first went in. Yes, because she would posted a picture of herself saying that she was strapping her gun to herself, walking around Washington, D.C., even though Washington, D.C. does not have a conceal and carry or uh, um, uh, open carry permit. You, can, you can't carry your weapon around. In no, no, no. It's just like New York City. You do not, unless you can prove to a judge that your life is under threat and you need to have a gun to protect yourself, you do not do that. Yep. Or if it's part of your job. Right. Right. Unless you're law enforcement, whether state or federal. Security guard. Cetera, Defend, cetera. A security card, depending upon what it is. Yes. If the, if you have to security, prove it's a it's a necessity to your job. Right. If you're a security guard for, um, banks, banks or government buildings, you are allowed to carry. If you're a security guard for a the mall. mall. <laughs> yeah. If you're Paul Blart, you don't get to carry. <laughs> no, no. You get to go around with a nice little scooter. <laughs> and a whistle. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> you know, it's just like um, store security. Um, one of um, our local trans men, Avon Monette, he's store security at Walmart. 
He walks the floors. He cannot carry. Probably can't even detain anybody either. No. He the can most just re report the description to the police and what they took. The, the most that they can do is hold the individual until law enforcement show up, and that's it. If they feel it necessary, like if somebody's walking out the store with stuff that they've decided to Steel. do a discount on. Um, but that's the only time. So there's a difference. Yes. I know several officers that are on the Plattsburgh force. They would draw their guns on somebody that's doing an open carry. Not literally, but they would have they would be ready to draw if the person does not lay down their weapon. That's how seriously they take their job. They yeah, need to. <laughs> yeah. You know, in our some... country, everyone's carrying a weapon nowadays. I mean, it's no wonder oh, yeah. why the cops are shooting first and asking questions later. And I mean, granted, they're doing it more to black people than anybody else. But... Yeah, which is, in my opinion, kind of stupid and nuts. Um... On our black, black child. Shoot him. He has an armed a, white person threatening to kill people. Ah, let's take him into custody. See that black guy over there holding that cell phone? That's not a cell phone. That's a gun. We're going to shoot him. That's how twisted some of these cops are. Unfortunately. And it's not the majority of them, fortunately, too. Well, there's the blue curtain that needs to come down. Right. The good cops need to start turning into bad cops. I've always been a, a fan of good police officers. Oh, always yeah, have I, been. Oh, yeah. I've been a, always a big supporter of community policing. I mean, I've, I've been saying that they need to cycle police through bad neighborhoods and good neighborhoods, from desk to street, from desk to street. Three months in each area, let them take some time away so that it, and mix them up so they're not partnering with the same people all the time. And, that's, and, that's my opinion of and, it. In some police departments, not all of them, but some they require their officers to live in the communities that they police. Not in Buffalo anymore. No. Nope, they got rid of that in Buffalo. They're trying to bring it back, but they, they got rid of it. Yeah, yeah. In some of these larger cities, they did that. Um, in the smaller ones, they really don't have to do that. In Plattsburgh, um, most of the officers, both the city police, campus police, state troopers, and sheriff's department, they tend to live within their communities. That's because the dry, they don't want a long commute. <laughs> yeah. And, and pretty, the, pretty the crime is low. The crime is low. Oh, yeah. You know, I forget the last time we had a major murder in Plattsburgh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got to let you go. I got to get so, something to eat. Yeah. Anyways, we're done. And. <sighs> Pleasure, pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure, and I'll talk with you later. Yes, please do. Yeah, you have a good one, Diane. You too, and stay safe. Oh, yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.